Hello, welcome to Maisha Special Report as we give you the latest updates from across the country and beyond. My name is Maisha Simbi. Alright, we begin our broadcast with the story where President William Ruto on Tuesday officially opened the special plenary sitting for the East Africa Legislative Assembly IALA during the inaugural sitting of the 5th Assembly. The 63-member State Assembly will hold its sittings in the country for the next three weeks to consider reports by different committees. The three-week session, which ends on March 20th, will hold its debate under the chairmanship of IALA Speaker Joseph Ntakiti Rimana. Insightful debates and fruitful deliberations as you usher in the third session of this assembly. Feel at home while you are in Kenya. It's called Magical Kenya, the home of all humankind. And I urge Honorable Omar Hassan, Chair of the Kenyan Chapter of the Assembly, to use his, this session to introduce you to the warmth and hospitality of countries using a literary formula rated here and if you don't do certain things you are taken down and as you are taken down you pay more interest it is also it, we need to have a conversation about credit rating agencies and we need to have a conversation about risk assessment because there is perceived risk that becomes larger than real risk and that perceived risk is pushed by certain quarters to make Africa uncompetitive. And that is the reason why, while others are accessing development resources at 102%, most African countries are accessing development resources in markets at between 10 and 15%. Explain to me, honorable members, if one group set of countries are accessing development resources at 1-2% and another is accessing between 10 and 15%, is it realistically possible for us to grow at the same rate? No. This is the conversation we must have, you know? And we must remove this arbitrary unfairness. You know, this arbitrary unfairness from global financing. And that is why we are saying we must have a thorough conversation about the reform of multilateral development banks and the whole international financial architecture as a whole. When we started this debate a year ago, we looked like mad people. But I promise you, today, in every meeting, everybody has come to the conclusion that there is a problem with the architecture of international financing. And the conversation is no longer if, the conversation is when are we and how are we going to reform it. And that is why it is important for institutions like the East Africa Legislative Assembly to Apply itself, apply your mind to what kind of contribution are you going to make in this reform that is going to make our economies access development financing. It is the only way we can make meaning to our development. The last IDA replenishment, for example, in 2021, raised US dollars 91 billion, which was dispersed to eligible beneficiary countries over a period of three years. The Kenya summit that we are holding in April aims to highlight to donors and other development partners critical priority target areas of development financing in Africa and in our region, make the case for a significantly higher level of financing in either 21 cycle and support East African countries to effectively address development challenges and exploit the huge opportunities that we have in our region. This is the candid conversation we're going to have. 
And I am very confident that the fact that World Bank accepted that this was a necessary uh, exercise confirms to us that somebody somewhere is listening to what we are saying. You know? And our position is it is not going to be done until it is done. Yes. I have invited my fellow heads of state and government to participate in this highly important platform. Being confident of this assembly's capacity to facilitate transformative interven interventions, I urge you, honorable members, to join this course and formulate your, un your contributions to this endeavor with urgency. Give some imagination, put in it some ambition, so that together we can push an agenda that is going to support all our economies. I am highly obliged to you, Honorable Speaker, for inviting me to address this assembly. I do not take your consideration for granted, and I believe we're going to have a discourse that is going to be beneficial for all our countries. I wish you all, Honorable Members, productive engagements, insightful debates, and fruitful deliberations as you usher in the third session of this assembly. Feel at home while you are in Kenya. It's called Magical Kenya, the home of all humankind. And I urge Honorable Omar Hassan, Chair of the Kenyan Chapter of the Assembly, to use his, this session to introduce you to the warmth and hospitality of our country. Uh, and I urge you, Honorable Hassan, to make that only in places that are licensed. <laughs> <laughs> and in no other places. So, honorable members, I really uh, wish you well while you are in Kenya. And maybe by conclusion, the speaker did make reference to um, what we are doing as East Africa. To, to give you the impression of what East Africa is doing, and, and therefore you must be very proud people that East Africa, in our continent, is the most progressive community. Our, our trade, intra-trade, between East African countries is the highest in the African continent. We are providing the leadership, and therefore, you occupy a very special place. And I want to urge you to continuously apply yourself to this huge responsibility. You are not only doing this for East African citizens, you are trailblazing for the continent of Africa. So continue with diligence but also a pace to make sure that you help us move the continent together. It is the reason, for example, why as members of, of the summit in East Africa, as you're all aware, the chair of the AU is coming up next year as the term of Musa Faki, our current chair, comes to an end. It is going to be the turn for East Africa to provide the chair of the African Union. We have sat down in the spirit of the East African community. We have consulted as heads of state from the East African community together, and we have agreed to sponsor one candidate as East Africans. As, as East Africans because that is the strength of our community, that we can do things together and we can consult amongst one another. So it speaks to the spirit of the leadership that is being provided by our region. <laughs>